Hey guys, it's Panther, and the question that I get most often is how do I climb, or why am I stuck in X ELO? So I wanted to go over the top five reasons why you might be hard stuck and how to fix them quickly. However, before I get into those reasons, go ahead and like the video and subscribe. We post new content every day done by Challenger players. Now, without further ado, the top five reasons why you might be hard stuck. In order to make this video and truly understand why hardstuck players exist, I dove into the depths of Diamond undercover on an account with a negative win rate. I did this to try and understand why players play so many games without giving them too much hope that they have a smurf on their team so they'd change their attitudes and that sort of thing. Here are the top five most common things that I found even in Diamond, the top 5%. If you're able to apply these simple things to your play, I guarantee you will see tons of improvement. Remember, these are just quick fixes. It's something that you can apply to your games instantly. If you want to see a video on the top five ways to improve your mechanical play, just let me know in a comment below. Now, the first reason that players get hard stuck is they play while tilted. If you're anywhere between iron and diamond, you're most likely making this mistake often, so listen up. This is by far the biggest issue that I saw. Oftentimes, I would play a game where we lost, and as the game went on, one of the players on my team would progressively get more and more upset, and by the end of the game, it would be clear that this player was tilted out of their mind. However, this is not the issue. Tilting during a losing game is something that's understandable. There isn't really much you can do about it. The big mistake comes after the game. Oftentimes, I would see this player that was already tilted from the previous game re and get into my next game. If this is something that you find yourself doing, then you need to stop re while you are tilted. So the next time that you lose, or even after a very frustrating win, ask yourself, how much am I enjoying League of Legends right now? Am I mad at the game at the moment, or am I okay to play another game? Go ahead and find an activity that will relax you and take you off of tilt. This can be anything such as playing normals or even a different game, listening to music, browsing the internet, talking to friends. Remember, tilt is a temporary emotional state that affects your play negatively. If you are on tilt, it is never a good idea to re for a second game, no matter how well you think you played your previous one. I want to kind of explain why tilting lowers your chances to win so much. See, tilt affects your perception of the game, it clouds your judgment, and it can make you look for plays that you would never otherwise try. It takes an insane amount of discipline in order to be able to play through tilt, and even pros are not immune to it. You can see this in professional games where sometimes a pro will make a mistake so big because they are so frustrated that it straight up loses a game. Now, there are ways to train your body to be immune to tilt. However, this takes a lot of practice and it's better to just realize when you are tilted and decide not to play another game until you are no longer tilted. The second thing that I see very often is players will not really know what to build or what skill order to take on champions. This one is very simple. A lot of the time I see people building wrong, rushing the wrong item, taking the wrong runes, building the wrong components first, just various things that are just not optimal for your play. For whatever reason, marksmen are obsessed with berserkers greaves, to the point where they will often never build any other boots. Now this does come down to the player, and there are a lot of marksman players who vary their boot selection from game to game. However, a lot of the time when I look at marksman match history, the only boots they are ever buying is Berserker's Greaves. If the enemy team has an 8 and OZ and you are buying Berserker Greaves as a marksman, no amount of peel or shielding is going to save you. You need Ninja Tabby on top of the help from your teammates in order to survive this. Similarly, if the enemy team drafts a point and click CC like Fiddlestick Sphere, then you need Merc Treads. You can't deal damage if you are dead or CC'd. Another thing that I will often see is people just following the recommended items in the shop. Now, if you're not sure what to build on a champion, what I would recommend is look up a top player for that champion and see what they're building. 
try to go off of their build. The best way to find a top player for a certain champion and find out what they build is to go over to op.gg and use their leaderboard section. You go over to the champion tab and search whatever champion you're looking for. Then scroll down and find whichever player is rated the highest and just copy whatever they're doing. If they have a few different builds, then figure out the reason why they're going each of these different builds and then apply that to your own games as well. Oftentimes the shop will recommend items that are not optimal and there's a better first choice. So make sure you're doing your research before playing a new champion. Another thing that you should do when you're new to a champion is make sure to look up the skill order. Oftentimes the skill order that you think might be correct might not be. So make sure you're taking the right skill order. Just by taking 10 to 20 minutes, you can examine a top player's build and understand why they're building certain things when and what runes are taking and why. If you're able to understand this simple fact, then you will be able to build properly in 90% percent of your games. One thing you have to keep in mind while climbing in League of Legends is there are two aspects to it. There's the physical game itself and then there's the ranked ladder. You need to understand both in order to be able to climb. Now if you're just playing the game for fun then you can completely ignore this next fact. However if your goal is to climb in rating or rank then you need to be both playing the physical game and the ladder. This is something that a lot of players don't really understand, that they're two separate things and both have an impact in your rank. Now, the most important thing when playing the ladder is dodging. This is very, very, very simple. Yet, I see so many games that go through where I think to myself, well, how did this match go through? How did this match not get dodged? For example, if your jungler locks in Janna, the chances are you're not going to win that game. If a game looks unwinnable like that from Champion Select, it's best just to dodge the game. This will serve a few purposes. The first is it will preserve your MMR. Now, I'm sure you've heard all about MMR, but I'll go over it just in case you haven't heard of MMR before. MMR, or matchmaking rating, is the hidden mechanic that drives the solo queue ladder. The ladder actually has nothing to do with your rank at all. It is entirely about your hidden MMR. For example, you can be a Diamond 4 player with Platinum 4 MMR, and if you do nothing to improve this, you will never climb. This is why MMR is so important. If your MMR is higher than your rating, then you will climb. If your MMR is lower than your rating, then you will fall or be hard stuck. Now, the best way to improve your MMR and make sure that it's higher than the rating you're at is to dodge. This is the most consistent way to do it and pretty much every high elo player agrees that dodging is the best way to improve MMR quickly. I won't go too far into it since it's not very complex, but basically dodging prevents a loss of MMR whereas losing does not. So if you see a game that you know you're going to lose and you dodge it, you just prevented yourself from losing MMR there and you will also lose less points. However, it's not really about the points, it's about not losing MMR. This means if you want to climb that you need to make sure you are dodging guaranteed losses, even if it feels unfair. Similarly, if you are not in the mindset to win and you're the one locking Janna jungle, then you should not be doing this in ranked. This should go without saying, however, I want to just touch on that quickly and make sure that nobody is going out there queuing Janna jungle and then wondering, hey, why can't I climb? Remember, you need to be taking every game seriously, not just half of your games. That's not to say that you can't enjoy games by playing something off meta. That's fine, however, normals is probably the best place for this. Now the fourth reason is actually a really big one. A lot of players do not see losing as a learning opportunity. This is one that I see a lot when I'm smurfing or watching somebody else smurfing in general. I would estimate that at least 90% of players that I play against while smurfing take the wrong attitude when approaching a loss. Instead of using that loss as a learning opportunity, often the player will just complain about how the game isn't fair. Something that you need to understand is League of Legends is not a fair game. It never has and it never will be. There will always be broken champions. There will always be players that don't want you to win. There will always be a skewed matchmaking. The game will never be completely fair. There's no way to do that. Complaining about how the game is unfair will never help you improve and often it will not 
not even make you feel better. Now, if you play against somebody and they absolutely destroy you in lane or later on in the game, then this is actually the best time for improvement. Try to add the player if you can and ask questions about why they did the things they did. Now, of course, if the player is being toxic or whatever, then it's better to just avoid them and try and look at the play yourself. You can rewatch the game from their perspective and try to see the small differences in between your play. What did they do better that you didn't do quite as well? Or what's something that they're doing that you've never seen before? This is your best shot at exposure to elements of the game that you might not even know exist. Now, this is not to say that every loss is a learning opportunity. Since League of Legends is a team game, sometimes you will lose because your team was just not as good as theirs. This is something that comes with experience, but you need to learn which games were losses because of you and what you can learn from those losses and which losses were because of your team and there's nothing to learn there for you. Now, the last and probably biggest reason that I see people that are hard stuck is probably something that you didn't see coming. Now this is because they spend the entire game typing instead of playing. Now this one's a little bit debated by the community, however, the higher you climb, the more people are in agreement. Every second that you spend typing is time that you cannot be playing. You physically cannot use your keyboard to activate your spells if your enter key is pressed down. In my opinion, if your only goal is to climb, the best way to do that is to not type to anyone. If you do have to type, then make sure it's as short as possible. So many times I see people arguing with each other instead of playing the game because of something that one of the players did. It doesn't matter. Typing that person is not going to do anything. Whatever they did is in the past. You can't undo it. Now, if you find yourself in the reverse situation and somebody is typing at you for a mistake that you made or even a mistake that you didn't make, make, it's best just to type my bad and move on. This will usually prevent the other player from continuing to type at you and you can all get back to focusing on the game and focusing on playing. Now, similarly, do not type out your entire game plan. This is something that I'll see a lot of supports doing. For example, they will type out, hey, dragon spawns in a minute, let's prep vision and then go to dragon, we can do the dragon and if they come we can bait and go for a pick. How much time did that player just spend typing out the game plan? This is all something that can be communicated with pings. And if the player isn't listening to your pings, try to keep it short. Now, if the player does not respond to your pings right away, then often it means that they understood your ping, they're just not interested. And oftentimes typing will not help. Remember, sitting still for even 10 to 15 seconds just to type is 10 to 15 seconds that you could have been doing something else, pressuring your lane, roaming, anything. Try not to sit still and type because this is something that is going to really impact your play negatively. It's not something that you want. There aren't very many exceptions to this rule. Try to familiarize yourself with all of the different pings and when you should be using them. Also, be sure to not be using pings in a toxic manner. This means that people are more likely to ignore your pings when you're actually using them for something you need help with. For example, if your top laner dies without alting and alting would have turned the fight and resulted in them winning, don't ping their alt because then the next time that you ping that you need help in the bot lane, they're not as likely to listen to your pings. They're much more likely to just mute your pings right away and then you're missing out on a teleport that could be helping you when you're being dove by three people in the bot lane. That does it for today's video. Make sure to like the video and subscribe. We post new content done by challenger players every day. If you are interested in another top five ways to improve video, maybe in a different topic, make sure to let me know in the comments down below. I hope you learned something valuable and I'll see you in the next one.